in order to make a full blown organism from a cell a cell need to divide but the cell division process cannot be haphazard the cell division process need to be highly controlled because uncontrolled division could give rise to pathological situations like cancer so cell division had to be done under several rules and regulations and these rules and regulations together dictate the cell signal the cell cycle checkpoint now in the cell cycle checkpoint you can think about the cell cycle checkpoint a surveillance mechanism by which cell ensures that its genetic material is transferred to the daughter cell reliably and also several other aspects of the cell division is not haphazard so the first checkpoint is the dna damage checkpoint at the interface between g1 phase and s phase the next checkpoint is the replication checkpoint which ensures the replication happens error free the third checkpoint is a dna damage checkpoint it works as a safeguard checkpoint and ensures that even if some errors are overlooked in the replication phase that could be revisited and corrected using this checkpoint and another checkpoint is g2m checkpoint which is so important such that the segregation of the genetic material properly happens and this checkpoint ensures the package dna in form of metaphase chromosome are properly segregated into the daughter cells now let's just first look at the g1 checkpoint g1 and s checkpoint which is a dna damage checkpoint and we would also try to look at the molecular mechanisms that is acting in this checkpoint so let's just look at what happens in g1 phase in order to in order for a cell to divide the cell need instructive cues from the environment before, because if the environment is not feasible the cell won't decide to divide if the nutrients in the environment are optimum cell would decide to divide and grow in size so the external environmental cues the mitogenic cues are conveyed to the cell in the g1 phase and that often give rise to the transcription of cyclin d gene and cyclin d cdk4 complex is the most important cyclin cdk complex acting in this g1 phase and as they are kinase so they can phosphorylate several downstream targets and let's just see what downstream targets cdk4 cyclin d phosphorylates such that the cell cycle can move from g1 and can go to s so in order for the cell to go to g1 to s the cell need to synthesize cyclin e because cyclin e would be absolutely essential at the replication phase but making cyc but making cyclin e also requires elongation factor 2f e2f now normally when cyclin 4 and cdk cyclin d and cdk4 are not active this e2f complex is sequestered by another gene known as prp but cyclin d and cdk4 phosphorylate prp and ensures that e2f is now free such that e2f can form cyclin e and the cell cycle can move from the g1 phase to the s phase so from these things we can understand that at g1 phase cyclin d and cyclin d and cdk4 based mechanisms are pretty important for progression of the cell cycle from g1 to a s phase now if there is anything wrong then the cell can modulate the activity of cyclin d cdk4 complex to stop the cell cycle at this point now let's say one problem occurs in the g1 phase that is the dna damage when the dna dam is damaged the cell can understand the dna is damaged by dna damage sensors atm and atr which are kinase in nature they can understand whether the dna is damaged or not once atm and atr understand the dna is damaged they recruit p53 and p53 works like a tumor suppressor gene and p53 
stops the cell cycle progression but how does p53 stops the cell cycle cell cycle progression p53 induce the formation of a cyclin inhibitor known as p21 cip p21 cip inhibits cyclin d cdk4 complex and as a result cell cycle cannot move further beyond g1 phase and cannot move into the s phase now at this point inhibiting cyclin d and cdk4 gives the cell some time to cross check its mistake cross check its error and try to reboot the system such a way that this error could be corrected now if the error is corrected then the cy cell cycle progression resumes now let's say the damage is irreversible then what happens is p53 give rise to bax bax is a protein that forms pore in the mitochondrial membrane and as a result cytochrome c comes out in the cytoplasm which interacts with other components like apof1 and give rise to caspase activation and caspase activation can ultimately lead to the apoptosis of the cell so that's how we can understand that if the cell if the inside the cell if the dna damage is repairable then the cell pauses and give the cell enough time to repair that damage if the damage is irreversible cell decide to kill it by in a, in a programmed fashion so this is how the g1 checkpoint works now once we learned about g1 checkpoint let's just move on to the replication phase and there we look at DNA damage checkpoint at S phase. Now, at the S phase, most important function of the S phase is the cell. Uh, in inside the cell is replication, the process by which the DNA would be replicated into two identical copies. Now that process is highly regulated and requires polymerase alpha and CDC45. Now CDC45 is only active when it is phosphorylated by cyclin E CDK2 complex and as you can remember cyclin E and CDK2 are most important components in the S phase and in turn cyclin E and CDK2 could be working at S phase because of cyclin D CDK4 activity in the G1 phase. Now what happens if there is a damage in the DNA at the S phase that could be also detected by the cellular sensors ATM and ATR which can understand there is a damaged DNA it can give the signal to certain kinase known as check one kinase which in turns can activate another phosphatase CDC25 and CDC25 inhibits cyclin E CDK2 complex now cyclin E and CDK2 complex are so important to activate CDC45 and thereby the normal process of replication but once CDC25 is activated due to a DNA damage it can suppress the cyclin E and CDK2 complex and thereby no replication can happen so the cell pauses at the S, S phase and tries to repair its own DNA damage if the damage is reversible cell resumes otherwise there are mechanisms by which cell is pushed toward uh, apoptosis that means programmed cell death moving on to the m phase one of the most important event at the m phase is aligning the chromosome in a proper plane known as metaphase plate now this alignment should be precise such that tension from the two poles are equal if the tensions from the two poles are equal at the anaphase stage the chromosomes would be segregated equally on to the two newly formed daughter cells if the tension is not proper then there is a chance that some portion of the chromosome would not be segregated or there could be unequal distribution now let's say here in this situation there is a uneven tension and the microtubules are not properly attached to the chromosome this generates an error signal inside the cell and this error signal could be detected before we look at how this error signal could be detected and one, what possible measure the cell can take let's just see what really happens in uh, in metaphase to anaphase transition 
in from the metaphase to anaphase transition the apc complex actually degrade actually degrades a inhibitor of separin and thereby activating the separin separin breaks all the cohesin rings and thereby allowing the chromosome to be segregated onto the two poles in the anaphase stage now what happens when the tension is uh, uneven or the microtubules are not properly placed there are sensors which can sense this error such as mad2 mad2 is one of the sensor that inhibits the anaphase promoting complex and thereby the anaphase promoting complex cannot activate separin and once separin cannot be activated by the anaphase promoting complex the cohesin rings could not be broken and as a result the cell at that point of time cannot segregate the uh, chromosomes into in the anaphase in short metaphase to anaphase transition is blocked and this makes sense because when the microtubules are not properly engaged that time cell need to pause it and make sure that equal tension is maintained from the two sides this is how cell ensures proper segregation of the chromosome in the two daughter cells so this is how several dna uh, damage checkpoints and chromosome segregation checkpoints work at a molecular level if you like my video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe and please comment on the video and give your suggestions such that i can make my videos more better